First of all, let me um, express our appreciation to the Center for Strategic Studies under the um, President of the Republic of Azerbaijan and its director, Dr. Farhad Mamad, for organizing this event. We have been partners with the SEM Azerbaijan and Center for Strategic Research under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Turkey for years already and have been organizing the um, trilateral conferences um, every year in one of the capitals in Ankara, Baku, or Tbilisi. Unfortunately, this year our partners from SAM Turkey cannot join us, but Turkey is well represented by Ambassador of uh, Turkey to Georgia, Her Excellency Fatma Ceren Yazgan, as well as other distinguished speakers. The recent deterioration of security environment makes the trilateral cooperation between our countries more difficult than it was a decade ago. It has been challenged by the changes within the geopolitical environment, Russia's aggressive behavior and actions to increase her influence in the region, occupation and violation of territorial integrity as well as developments in the Middle East, migration, extremist, terrorist, to name the few. But this increasingly changing security environment makes the trilateral cooperation between our countries even more demanding. Georgia's active engagement in regional projects in energy, trade, and transportation is extremely important for the country's economic growth and development, as well as raising Georgia's international function. But at the same time, this is essential for contributing to the creation of conditions for stability and strengthening collective will to maintain security at the regional level. The wider Caucasus region is as much blessed as it is cursed due to its location as it is an arena of geopolitical competition for regional and extra-regional powers. And its strategic importance is further increased due to the east-west transportation and energy projects. The strategic vision of the regional cooperation scheme between our three countries has been developed back in the 90s to respond to common threats and at the same time mark our common adherence to Euro-Atlantic space that predetermined strong support for our cooperation projects from the West. Today's level of relations between Azerbaijan, Georgia and Turkey is a result of multi-year natural development and is based on common interest and undertaking of projects bringing real benefits to all three of us. Initiation of the so-called contract of the century afforded Western multinational companies to explore and exploit Caspian resources and Azerbaijan and Georgia to become significant transit states, what meant not only economic development but was a defining factor in reinforcing Azerbaijan and Georgia's political independence. As a result, Baku Supsa oil pipeline became operational, followed by Baku Tbilisi Jehan, Baku Tbilisi Erzurum, and finally ANAP will be opened on June 12 in a Turkish city of Eskishahir with the participation of the presidents of three countries. Another important dimension of our cooperation is the realization of an advantage that all three countries together may offer to the rest of the world, in particular to connect by transport routes Europe with the Caspian region and beyond essential to further increase and facilitate trade between East and West. An important pillar in this corridor is the bakut pilisi Ars Railway that became operational last year. This project has increased the overall potential capacity of international trade turnover directed through our three countries and opened perspective for such a global endeavor as the Silk Road project. But fundamental in our relations is not only the shortest route between East and West, but it's also the value-based relation, respect for peace, territorial integrity, peaceful resolution of conflicts, and strive for cooperation for creating stable, just environment. In this regard, we appreciate Turkey's and Azerbaijan's support for Georgia's territorial integrity, reiterated once more a couple days ago, a few days ago, in connection with the Syrian regime's recognition of the so-called independence of Abkhazia and uh, South Ossetia regions of Georgia. Under this framework, our countries should also work together to tackle the existing challenges to trilateral cooperation, such as conflicts in the region, and try to neutralize or minimize external threats and develop a consolidated approach in order to minimize negative influences aiming at decreasing importance and significance of our mission. The future of the entire region, as well as operation of the BTC, was seriously threatened in 2008. 
the importance and meaning of all those issues is well known um, and well understood and supported in all three countries, but there is still need for uh, thorough assessment of opportunities, prospects and challenges. Um, by experts, politicians, and all stakeholders. And um, I'm confident that this conference will contribute to this end. With this, I would like to thank once more our partners and give floor to the director of the Center for um, uh, Strategic Studies under the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, to Dr. Farad Mamadov. Thank you. Independence. I'm delighted to welcome you all at our fifth annual conference on trilateral cooperation between Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Turkey. Every year, we come together to discuss our cooperation, to review opportunities and challenges in our region. Along with the dialogue of the governments, members of parliaments, government institutions, members of expert community take part in the integration process. The past year has been full of remarkable, remarkable events. We had opening ceremony of Bakut-Bilisi-Karks Railway, military drills. We had the first meeting of foreign ministers of our countries with Iran. All this demonstrates pragmatism of our interactions, openness and readiness to cooperation and new opportunities and potential that can serve national interests of our countries. Though the South Caucasus is not big in the geographical terms, but it reflects all trends that all Eurasian continent currently experience. Georgia chose European integration dimension Armenia is a member of Eurasian Economic Union and CSTO. Azerbaijan is a member of non-alignment movement and prefers bilateral and trilateral cooperation formats. President Ilham Aliyev pays special attention to the regional integration, particularly to trilateral format. On March 17, 2015, during the groundbreaking ceremony of Tanab in Kars, President Ilham Aliyev noted, trilateral cooperation, brotherhood, and unity of Azerbaijan, Turkey, and Georgia are eternal and forever. These three countries will continue to be together. They will build their future together. They will always support each other. The regional integration between Azerbaijan and Georgia continues to demonstrate positive trends. And along with Turkey, we have materialized bakut bilisi Jehan, bakut bilisi Erzurum pipelines, bakut bilisi Kars Railroad. Very soon, we will have opening ceremony of Hanap as the most important part of the Southern Gas Corridor. It should be underlined that most regional projects that our countries have materialized were initiated by our countries and being realized with our political will and financial resources. The regional and great powers have their own interests in our region. However, the regional integration and cooperation among our countries enable us to be an object, but to be a subject and the side of regional politics. Our interests must and should be taken into account. This year, Azerbaijan and Georgia celebrated centennial anniversary of independence. 100 years ago, our countries in Tbilisi announced their independence. But unfortunately, our independence did not last too long, and our countries were invaded. The examples of the first republics demonstrate that mutual support trust, joint projects, strengthening of statehood, and development of our economies create solid and sustainable foundation of our independence. Restoration of territorial integrity and combat against global threats are main challenges of our countries. 
our countries support each other on an international level, and this support is very important, especially given double standard of some great powers. 20% of territories of Azerbaijan is occupied by Armenia, and more than 1 million people have become IDP and refugees. And therefore, we do understand the position of Georgia better, better than anyone else. With this respect, the support of Turkey is also very important. As time passes, some circles in the world politics come to the conclusion that we have to accept the reality. However, for the nations like us, with histories of statehood with thousand years, the reality is not shaped with 10 or 20 years. For us, the strategic goal is to liberate our territories and to restore our national sovereignty. Therefore, we should not rush and give up from our positions, take steps that might, might hinder our strategic goals. Any changes in status quo and steps to restore relations with the aggressors can take place only after recognition of territorial integrity of our country. The regional cooperation assumes the establishment of institutions, infrastructure, and common vision, where equal rights and mutual benefit are main categories. With this respect, we have a very rich agenda, as well as experts must evaluate pricelessly the achievements, inform our society, societies about the results of this work. They should not be any place for any fears and disinformation. Unfortunately, even most developed countries become targets of disinformation and informational attacks. Our countries are not exception. We see that an alternative reality is being created. Fake information is dis disseminated, the purpose of which is to cast doubt on the process of strengthening regional integration. And what, what is offered in return, a return to the past, a lack of perspective, loss of independence. And in this context, we should inform our societies about the objective reality. Since the interdependence of our country, strategic partnership, equality, and mutual benefit are the foundations of our relations. I hope we'll have very fruitful discussions. Thank you for your attention. Yes, it's the heels and the platforms. Uh, it's an honor to represent my country here today before you. Uh, on behalf of the, the Turkish Center, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs Center for Strategic Research, SAM. And there are two SAMs in the room, but uh, one is in the Azeri and the other one is in the Turkish. And do we do understand each other? Um, SAM is not able to be here today because of the election uh, period in Turkey. Uh, but I was, uh, I take the opportunity <laughs> on their absence. Uh, everything actually about how Georgia, Turkey and Azerbaijan have been cooperating in the region uh, have very eloquently uh, said by uh, Eka and by Mr. Ali Farhat Bey and so uh, there's not much left uh, for me. Uh, but I'd like to uh, draw your attention to the fact that all the Rondeli, some and the other some uh, are all having in their symbols the globe. Uh, this is because all of our countries, when their strategic assessments, have to take into consideration uh, the, uh, the, the greater regional and global issues. And today's conference, the global and regional determinants, is very appropriate, uh, particularly in time and space that we are in. Uh, when we look at uh, where we are today, uh, between the East, uh, the, the Great uh, Awakening in the East, uh, economically and politically, 
China, and the West, which is not in a unity. When we talk about the West, uh, we talk about uh, the North America and Europe, Central Europe, West. Uh, and it is not a unity. In the past, there had been this East and West, uh, which was easy uh, to define. And today it's not. We have to be very flexible in our definitions. We have to be very flexible in our responses. And I think we have to be very... Um, um, we, we have to be very careful in terms of uh, how we uh, establish this black and white, the red lines. Uh, so we do need this strategic analysis in our policy making. And today, uh, I can tell you a year ago, uh, the alliances, the shifting alliances in the world, the, the topics that we were discussing are not the same. A year ago, please go through the headlines, you will see that nothing on the headlines uh, maybe coincides with today's headlines, with one exception, that is, there is a regional competition. And certain things have been on the agenda for 25 years now. It is territorial integrity. It is uh, the search for stability, for economic development, as enabling security and establishing uh, projects which cross regions so that we can uh, use uh, this economic, commercial uh, interest to build stability. So these are the parameters that didn't change. And to an extent we went back to the 19th century. I think when I listened to Luke Coffey on, on Georgia and NATO when he said that a 19th century diplomat would make uh, more sense of what's going on in the world today than a Cold War diplomat. And I think he's right. This, we are not in a Cold War. While they, there are still superpowers, there are still the P5 in the United Nations Security Council, which are determining uh, the, the United Nations Security Council decisions, resolutions. But nevertheless, uh, what's happening today is shifting alliances very fast, and Turkey, Georgia, and Azerbaijan, in the middle of this very ambivalent, ambiguous uh, state of affairs, we are trying to provide uh, a strategic cooperation which will be transferred to the next generations. 25 years ago, when the pipelines were drawn in, uh, around the tables, uh, nobody believed Baku Tbilisi Jehan well, could be sustainable and actually yield. And we didn't do it alone. It is very much linked to Azerbaijan, the development of Azerbaijan as a state, as a nation, as a country, as an economy. Uh, the Caspian developments. And we were doing it together with multinational companies whose mother com countries are also involved. So it's a, not only three of us working here as the countries, we're working with allies and we're working with multiple actors. So this is why it is very complex and this is why I think uh, this uh, conferences among uh, the, the analysis, the think tanks uh, are very necessary with the involvement of academia uh, because I th the, what proves that we were right and we are right is those projects which are becoming a reality after one another. Uh, in about eight years ago, people were discussing uh, how the Caspian and uh, the, the energy security with the Ukraine gas crisis, uh, the second Ukrainian gas crisis. We were all talking about the European <coughs> nations, the, the security of and diversification of energy resources, routes, and now we are, when everybody was talking, we started building together. So I also think that that also shows we are not only talking in these rooms, it's not only expert talk, but we have managed for a change in our regional and sometimes global history. We take ideas, we meet them, feed them, 
to the policy making and then we evaluate pluses and minuses, revisit and see what we can do more or better. So I think this exercise is particularly useful also in that respect, our reflexes, our capability to learn uh, as three countries intellectually. Uh, I think that's uh, a rare uh, achievement uh, in life, so I congratulate all three uh, institutions for making this possible. And, and I, again, thank you for your interest and thank you for this invitation extended. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. And now I have a pleasure to introduce our special guest, um, Mr. Tengiz Pahaladze, uh, advisor to the President of Georgia, Foreign Relations Secretary, and ask him to deliver his keynote address. We appreciate you agreeing to be part of this event. Thank you, Egan. Good morning, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, Ambassador. Ambassadors, uh, you know, uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, when I came here, our distinguished and respectful media, uh, they asked me what I think about uh, partnership between Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Turkey. Uh, and today, everyone agreed that uh, this partnership is so natural and. Uh, this partnership is more than partnership. And today we take this for granted. But uh, it never was uh, granted for free and it never was granted at all. Uh, it was created that crafted by people, our wise leaders. Mm, uh, and when I recall today, uh, how it started 25 years ago. Uh, that time I thought that they are the pragmatic people, pragmatic politicians. But today, then I'm rethinking about it because I was, I had a pleasure to be in and with uh, team and with the people uh, who were working about those projects. I, today I'm thinking that they were dreamers. They were dreamers because 25 years ago it was a project, it was unthinkable. It was unthinkable because Georgia, Azerbaijan, just, just imagine countries with huge problems, economic, social, political, uh, in the process of creation new political elites uh, in the process of determination of main vectors of development, they start thinking about the future of this region. And I remember I, Alex Lundell, uh, my friend, my teacher, uh, the person who always was uh, thinking and dreaming about better Georgia. Uh, when we were discussed the projects, his remarks always was the thing is, this is not a project. This is future. This is geo geopolitical development. And really today, when we are talking about our cooperation, it's really more than cooperation. Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Turkey, this is not just transit corridor. It's not just uh, energy resources. This is oxygen corridor when we are talking about future of East-West cooperation. This is oxygen corridor for the many, many nations wants to have different and alternative routes for cooperation between East and West. Uh, I, today I am among distinguished uh, experts and uh, definitely you know much better about this 
energy projects and transport projects and so on, so on. But let me uh, just share some thoughts and highlight that when we are talking about cooperation, first of all, this is responsibility. Responsibility uh, between our nations and partners. And uh, all attempts undermining these projects are, and all obstacles has been created to prevent our future cooperation. Uh, 2008, it wasn't just uh, just attempt to occupy Georgia State Park. It was operation to prevent further development of Azerbaijan, Caspian countries, uh, East-West cooperation, undermining values we are committed, undermining uh, our dedication to freedom, to free competition, and so on. Uh, today, all challenges, all uh, threats, they may be are multifaced, but they all are interconnected. And uh, this country, regrettably, has uh, at least 25, 26 years of experience of hybrid war. And if not cooperation with Turkey, if not cooperation with Azerbaijan, if not support of our friends, we can't survive. And that's why I call this partnership more than partnership. It's not just about energy. It's not just about the transport. It's not just about the goods. It's about us, about our future, and about our nations. 100 years ago, uh, we declared uh, first Georgian Republic, as well as Azerbaijan, as well as Armenia. It's very interesting that we countries with so big history and statehood, we declared republic because uh, the public demand of our nation was development of freedom, development towards Europe, and development according to values. This development was stopped and prevented by occupation from Soviet Russia. Uh, and uh, today, when we still have chance for cooperation, we have to pay more consideration uh, to our past, to our history, and prevent mistakes. Uh, and don't repeat them again. And understand that future and prosperity of Georgia, it means future and prosperity of Azerbaijan. And future and prosperity of Georgia and Azerbaijan means future and prosperity of Turkey. And future and prosperity of our region, it means prosperity of East and West cooperation. Today, when we are talking about the future of Euro-Atlantic cooperation, or we are talking about the future of uh, uh, security and new uh, European security architecture, we have to pay attention that without security of Black Sea regime, without security of nations like Georgia, like Azerbaijan, like Turkey, like others, it's impossible. And if we tolerate some way violation of main principles, main pillars of international order, if we somewhere tolerate violation of uh, sovereignty, territorial integrity, human rights, and so on, we will definitely have this problem in the different ways. So uh, let me once again uh, thank you for this invitation, congratulate for this great initiative, and wish you a uh, very, very successful conference and a lot of new ideas and new projects and uh, cooperation. Thank you. So high level analytical uh, speeches we heard. So it was already starting for the conference and very good start. So now we can say that we are warmed up. So we can just continue.
uh, the debate that already started. And Thank the you. debate that started, uh, first of all, my name is, who doesn't know me, uh, I'm Dacha Gobolashvili from Rodelli Foundation. And it is written in the program. <laughs> so, in order you are not uh, surprised that I took the word first. So, uh, and I'm moderating this panel. Uh, I'm very honored because of this. So, uh, so, so, many, so many ideas and so many, uh, so many thoughts and very useful uh, contributions to, to this conference already been done. And I think that uh, uh, the main thing is uh, we understood that uh, uh, from the previous, from the previous um, uh, panel, I would say, it's rather a panel than just welcoming speeches, uh, is that uh, Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Georgia, they are natural partners. And they're uh, very, well, very well said by Turkish ambassador that uh, in the changing environment and alliances also, this trilateral cooperation uh, will survive, not just should survive, but it will survive because it's very natural. Because otherwise, uh, for all of us, um, uh, will be difficult to to, uh, to feel ourselves as uh, uh, confident in, in, uh, uh, in open security, confident in, in our prosperity and uh, prospects of development. Uh, so, so much everything depends, uh, it's, uh, President's advisor said that it's uh, oxygen, They're very well <coughs> said, because it's not about only energy, this uh, corridor that uh, links uh, uh, east and west through Turkey, Georgia and Azerbaijan, but it's really something more. It's about interchange of ideas between the regions. So it's a, the regions becoming closer, the civilizations becoming closer, sharing more, uh, first of all, values and uh, understanding each other, and of course, cooperating uh, and so on. So everything is important in this regard. The first of all, security for all of, all, all of us. It's very well also observed, it was observed during previous, which is that the hybrid threats and conventional threats uh, are so, so real in this region. So real in this region, would it be Black Sea region as such, or Black Sea Caspian region, wider region. Uh, and uh, of course, economic problems and possibilities of declining of economies uh, um, and trends, uh, uh, migration uh, um, issues, uh, so many challenges, terrorism and uh, uh, also extremists developing uh, and instabilities around us, instabilities around us. Also, of course, very important is uh, uh, reshaping or rethinking the world order by some uh, um, redditist powers, powers who revisionist power saying, claiming territories of other countries, etc. Uh, where it would lead, we don't know exactly, but in any case, we know that we should be together and we should cooperate. This is very important. So let me uh, stop uh, my introduction in this uh, sense. That we have very important things to discuss and excellent experts uh, from Turkey, Azerbaijan and Georgia. Uh, experts who worked during years and uh, um, even tens of years in, uh, in, on these problems related to uh, security, to uh, international relations, and especially focusing on our region and problems of our region. This is Dr. Kavit um, Veliev, uh, Head of Foreign Policy Analysis Department Center for Strategic Studies under the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Surat Patiashvili, my colleague from the Rondeli Foundation, research fellow who recently joined us, but uh, he used to work on uh, international relations since years, and uh, uh, Professor Dr. Oktay <coughs> Tans Resever, uh, he's from Middle East Technical University. We see him time to time in different conferences, so well known expert as well. So thank you very much gentlemen, for joining this uh, uh, interesting panel. And let's start discussing the very important issue, which is challenges that trilateral cooperation may experience uh, um, because of unpredictable international environment. This is the main. So because of uh, different uh, problems that uh, around us and that 
uh, of course, hinder and attack uh, our cooperation and uh, they can threaten our cooperation. Let us to, to start from uh, uh, Mr. Khabib Veliev, Dr. Khabib Veliev, uh, Turkish, uh, oh, sorry, uh, I mean, uh, from uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, and let me to ask you, uh, the, what is the view, positioning of Azerbaijan in relation to this numerous problems uh, in, uh, that surround our region, uh, how the Azerbaijan views, and, and you personally also, not only just official, uh, we have how Azerbaijan views it, to uh, tackle these problems, to withstand, uh, and to continue its policy on uh, peaceful uh, development of uh, the Caucasus and uh, of the region and uh, cooperation with the West uh, and uh, uh, being the bridge between the East and West so, and so on. The strategy, Azerbaijan strategy, how you saw uh, the Azerbaijan can withstand uh, within this, uh, uh, surrounded with, with such uh, challenges. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here again in Tbilisi. It's a, a friendly city and beautiful city. We are in a historical period as uh, one week ago we celebrated a uh, hundred anniversary of Georgia uh, and Azerbaijan. Uh, I think um, in 1920 Azerbaijan and Georgia was occupied by Bolshevik Russians and 70 years uh, then, after 17 years, Georgia and Azerbaijan decided they have common future with a uh, strategic partner, Turkey. Today, I, um, I would like, uh, as a first speaker of the panels, I would like to uh, give a general framework uh, that uh, current situation on global and regional uh, level that have impacts on the uh, trilateral uh, relations. I think this uh, view uh, will answer your question how Azerbaijan sees the situation in global and in regional uh, program. First of all, uh, despite the uh, dilemma uh, approach and different interests, I think the trilateral relations uh, of this uh, countries and is on the right path. Uh, certainly today, of course, all the regional countries and all the, uh, the three countries have their own interests, but I think uh, they try to avoid uh, to hurting from the other issues and to cooperate much more. Uh, moreover, trilateral relations are not depending uh, domestic politics of three states, and they develop independently from the change of authorities in these states. Actually, as a regional trilateral, today in region we have also other uh, trilateral relations, for example, Azerbaijan, Iran, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Turkey, Turkmenistan. I, I, I think that actually as a, sorry? Pakistan. Pakistan, of course, uh, Pakistan also. I think the other regional trilateral relations as a result of success of Agate uh, relations because I think Azerbaijan, Georgia, Turkey has proved that they're successful in all area. Uh, that's why uh, it's a good plat the, this trilateral relation has proved that uh, it's a good platform for discussion, for uh, project. That's why I think other regional trilateral relations as a result of such successful trilateral relations between Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. Uh, this, uh, we have seen, uh, we, we have witnessed that today uh, as a result of successful projects, today Azerbaijan, Turkey, Georgia, and trilateral relations has transformed from uh, trilateral relation to quadruple format with involvement of Kazakhstan and Iran, it's a good news uh, for our trilateral relations. Uh, and 
Uh, today, many regional and global powers uh, players regard in this trilateral role format very positive. We have, we know that since the 90s, Western countries support this trilateral uh, relations, and today I think that uh, Iran and during the 90s, Iran and Russia were strongly against this trilateral format, but today uh, I think Russia and Iran don't see this trilateral relation as a part of geopolitical competition in the region because these trilateral relations have proved that they are not a part of geopolitical uh, competition. They are they focus on only for regional cooperation, regional uh, project. Uh, as today, Iran, uh, it is a good opportunity uh, for Iran to use this corridor to energy links, transportation links, in order to have uh, access to the Western uh, market. And also, China's One Belt, One Road project also has a positive impact trilateral relations. Uh, that's why tri uh, Chinese welcomes trilateral format of the relations. As you know, that as a result of the competition in the Asian region between uh, China and the United States of America, China declared one bed, one road project, at the, uh, and the Baku Tiflisi Cars Railway that is launched last year, the part of this project. But uh, unfortunately, the uh, speaker before me mentioned the territorial integrity and sovereignty uh, has not yet uh, restored Georgian and Azerbaijan. And despite the Minsk group arbitrary attitudes, the, the continuing of occupation of Azerbaijan territories and, and continuing occupation of Georgian territories maintain or continues. Uh, unfortunately, Today, the Armenian new Prime Minister, Nikol Pashinyan, uh, might be the last drop of the hope, not because he is original in the Nagorno-Karabakh region, but because of his political statements about Nagorno-Karabakh conflict are hazardous. Such statements radicalize Armenian society and gives uh, them new, but but unreal hopes regarding the resolution of Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Pashinyan's statement that Nagorno-Karabakh Armenian's community must be part of diplomatic discussions is unrealistic. Of course, today, uh, the second dangerous issue is that Pashinyan tries to give more, uh, more role of Armenian diaspora in domestic and foreign policies of uh, Armenia and it's very dangerous development because we know that view, views of uh, Armenian Jews are more radical uh, regarding the relations between Armenia and Turkey and Nagorno-Karabakh uh, issue. I think today Nosso's corridor uh, also, new, also opens new opportunities for further cooperation between Azerbaijan, Georgia, Turkey particularly the southwestern part of the corridor opens the opportunity for Georgia to be part of this corridor. In the framework of the North South Corridor, Azerbaijan has also completed its part of works. The corridor will reduce the time uh, required to transport goods from Asia to Black Sea region from 45 days to 15 days. Today, uh, Turkey pursues more independent foreign policy and not compete with uh, other regional powers. Uh, I think it has very positive impact on trilateral relations since some regional powers don't regard Turkey as a, a, as a part of Western interest in the region. It creates Turkey much more area for maneuvering in the region. Uh, sanction against uh, Russia and the West-Russia uh, confrontation create, creates new geopolitical river in the region. But I think that Ru Russia and other states of the region understood that they have to cooperate. Uh, more of the Western countries are not active in the region. 
So, and also sanctions against Russia by the Western countries opened new markets for Turkish and Azerbaijan goods. A nuclear agreement between Iran and Western countries also opened new areas for cooperation and decreased regional tension. But abandoning the agreement by the uh, Donald Trump administration created new uncertainty in the region because Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Tur uh, Georgia have to develop their relations with Iran according to the new geopolitical situation. Syrian crisis has negative impact on Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. In addition, Syrian government recognition of independence of so-called Abkhazia and South Ossetia state is a result of Syrian crisis. Turkey, as a result of Syrian crisis, Turkey uh, faced four million of Syrian refugees and new terrorist uh, threats from the region. And also, as a result of Syrian crisis, many Syrian Armenians settled in occupied Azerbaijan territories in Nagorno-Karabakh. Polarization in the uh, Middle East has ne negatively impact over the both Azerbaijan and Turkey. Firstly, it is dangerous or regular between sectarian groups and has impact on both Azerbaijan and Turkey. The radicalization great uncertainty for both states policy towards the region. But Azerbaijan has good relations with all sides, including Iran, Saudi Arabia. Secondly, the tension in the Middle East and state of war creates dangerous situation for oil transport for Azerbaijan also. Last but not least, the recent inauguration of South Gas Carator is a new impetus for increasing of geopolitical impact, importance of relations between the Australian terrorism. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Um, well, I saw that your uh, 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 your attitude to to the to the issue is more positive than negative. So I see I see that this is very good. So you see more uh, positively the development, and uh, so we can uh, ask other partners, uh, other uh, presenters, what they think about the future of our relations and how international situation influences this relations and. Ask uh, Mr. now to um, present his views. Please. Your Excellency, dear friends, uh, welcome again uh, to Georgia. Uh, uh, let I try to be uh, short in my speech. Uh, what we see in our region. Uh, first of all, is uh, it's uh, we face security uh, problems, uh, security challenges, uh, and uh, first of all, it's uh, a never-ending Russian occupation uh, in Abkhazia and uh, South Ossetia. But not only uh, we see the same behavior, aggression behavior, not only in uh, our region but uh, beyond. Uh, in uh, Eastern uh, Europe, in the Middle East, uh, for example, we see annexation of Crimea in, in Black Sea region, and we see uh, war in Eastern Ukraine. Uh, again, uh, Syria, uh, and it is uh, not only for problem, uh, not only for Middle East, for the Middle East, but uh, for Turkey as well as uh, for Europe and other countries. Uh, we see millions of refugees from uh, Syria. Uh, we see uh, tensions in the Middle East uh, between Saudi Arabia and Iran, and uh, between Israel and Iran. So it's. Um, uh, some kind of um, uh, fire uh, in this region, and we have to uh, cooperate with uh, Turkey and Azerbaijan to cope these problems. It's very important to have uh, support of uh, Turkey, for example, uh, uh, regarding uh, so-called uh, uh, recognition of uh, Syrian regime, uh, Assad regime, of so-called independence of uh, Abkhazia and uh, South Ossetia. 
but uh, at the same time, it might be a uh, challenge also for Azerbaijan because uh, nobody knows what uh, is in mind of uh, Assad or other regi regimes um, in our region. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, we see uh, terrorism uh, in the region, in the South Caucasus, in Turkey, and uh, uh, as Turkey supports Azerbaijan and Georgia, Azerbaijan and uh, uh, Georgia also supports Turkey. Uh, we are, we have inter some kind of interdependence uh, uh, among uh, our countries. We have shared history, uh, common present, and I think uh, we have common future. Uh, uh, on this uh, framework, we have uh, common interests in big regional projects like Baku, Tbilisi, Cars Railway, uh, Baku Tbilisi, Jehan oil pipeline and Southern uh, gas corridor. It connects uh, not only uh, um, uh, big companies or states, it uh, connects uh, nations and big uh, civilizations. Uh, it connects China and Europe and uh, many, many uh, other countries uh, with each other. Uh, at, the time, uh, at the same time, we uh, have uh, very good uh, mechanisms uh, between our ministries to cooperate. For example, we have annual meetings of our ministers of foreign affairs as well as ministers of uh, uh, defense. Uh, but I think that we have to uh, create new mechanisms also with participation of other ministers, for example, culture or education. We have many common uh, uh, threats and challenges in our region. At the same time, I want to say that uh, these uh, three countries, uh, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and uh, uh, Turkey, are open for cooperation. Today, we are uh, talking about uh, occupation, we are about terror and, and uh, uh, so-called recognition, but I hope that uh, uh, in uh, the future, one day, we will see uh, changing policies of uh, uh, other countries in our region, and I hope that uh, those countries will also see that uh, cooperation is the main thing what our nations need, but uh, not war and not uh, conflict, but cooperation for uh, our future, for future of our countries, for the future uh, of our nations. Uh, In a, another thing uh, is um, uh, another ch challenge is um, uh, so uh, so called uh, uh, regional terrorism, which is uh, not only in Syria but uh, it uh, uh, influences uh, also South Caucasus, also Turkey. We have cooperated in security issues uh, uh, and. Uh, also, we have um, some kind of uh, uh, challenges regarding uh, re uh, regarding uh, uh, ter uh, territorial in integrity. Uh, we have to cooperate uh, on the international level. Uh, this country's uh, position is very important uh, regarding uh, uh, of course, this uh, occupation. Uh, thank you. This is very brief. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So, um, I will ask one question to you. Uh, as, as far as your, your speech was quite short, very concise, uh, lots of ideas, but uh, short, so you have some time to respond. Uh, what about the challenges that, for example, the European Union faces and uh, how it influences, it may influence 
our relations with Twitter. Uh, and um, maybe also I will, I will ask you a question to Mr. Valier that I, I, I wanted also to, to ask for him regarding the China's, how you see the China's factor in uh, involvement in the region and what China brings with it and how um, Azerbaijan sees the future cooperation with China and how it influences the trilateral cooperation also. Uh, you know, European Union is very important for our region. We have, uh, as uh, everybody knows, uh, visa-free regime with uh, uh, Schengen country, uh, countries. I think, uh, I, I hope that uh, one day Turkey also will get and the Azerbaijan will also participate in uh, visa-free regime. And uh, Turkey has uh, also uh, uh, it has uh, it is candidate uh, for membership for, for European Union and also uh, maybe one day Georgia and Azerbaijan also participate in this uh, union in this way and uh, uh, Turkey might be uh, some kind of uh, uh, way for us a uh, good example for us how to negotiate this uh, European Union. But uh, unfortunately not today, but uh, I hope that Turkey will participate one day. At least it's no. our hope. <laughs> because uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, membership uh, in NATO or the European Union, uh, it's uh, uh, impossible to think only Georgia or only Azerbaijan without uh, uh, context. Context, uh, regional context is very important. No, I think that in Brussels nobody thinks that one day Azerbaijan will be member, but not Georgia and not Turkey. It's, uh, uh, it, it must be in the context of uh, development. Well, thank you very much. So, uh, I think the stability of both European Union and uh, China uh, will be important for our cooperation. To, but please, uh, China go on with this. in Azerbaijan, uh, we see uh, from three point of view. We will look to China three point of view. First one, uh, economical investment. Uh, the uh, China investment in the increase of China investment in the region, in Azerbaijan and Georgia, it's a good news. We evaluate this development good news. Uh, and other transportation from, uh, for Azerbaijan, the China, uh, from the transportation view, it's very important because uh, the Azerbaijan uh, is not in the on one bucket of discuss railway project, we have uh, different projects, transportation projects in the region, North South project, Lapis Lazuli project, that uh, the access of Afghanistan to the world market starts from Afghanistan, goes to Turkmenistan, Caspiansia, Azerbaijan, then Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan. A, a lot of transportation projects we have. That's why we are expecting China to contribute to our uh, transportation project with uh, goods. Uh, secondly, uh, you know that Armenia tried to be part of one belt, one road project, but they uh, need uh, more than three billion dollars, but they don't have enough money to uh, for this transportation project. They asked from China, but China didn't give them enough money because they uh, China think that they, are, they created. Infrastructure, transportation infrastructure in the region by Azerbaijan. Uh, they, de they don't need any investment in the region. And politically, um, two different things. First one, uh, what's the view of China on occupation of Azerbaijan territory? China, official and non-official, we think that support Azerbaijan territorial integrity and sovereignty. And in this regard, I think we are starting to in a military way to cooperate with them. Uh, and, uh, but but in, uh, in the region, in Central Asia, uh, in, uh, in Azerbaijan, not official, but some experts argue that uh, today China is economically uh, 
forward, but in the near future it will be the military power in the region. How, what's the goals of China in the region, political goals of China? I think some experts argue different, they have a different goals. Thank you. Thank you very much, both. And uh, let us now to, to give floor to our <coughs> distinguished Turkish uh, expert, uh, uh, Dr. Oktay uh, Tahri Sever, uh, and ask him uh, to expose also Turkish views on our cooperation, how important is for Turkey this cooperation. This is interesting. And uh, of course, uh, it's interesting also Turkish Russian relations for us. Uh, the, uh, uh, Russia's uh, behavior, everybody knows in the region. Uh, we saw several times the confrontation uh, rose between Turkey and Russia, then uh, again uh, good relations. So this is quite volatility in relations. But also Turkey EU relations and uh, Europe, uh, whatever goes on in European Union, how it influences the Turkish uh, prospects of uh, Turkish views and this so everything is interesting. What what you will say to us, and I'm sure that it will be interesting. Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much, <coughs> uh, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased and honored to be with you and to share my ideas about the uh, bilateral cooperation. Uh, uh, I'm in particular thankful to the organizers and Azerbaijan's uh, sons uh, for. Uh, inviting me to this uh, very important event, uh, which I participated uh, uh, in Turkey in uh, previous uh, months. Uh, and I uh, am a very good uh, supporter of idea of this trilateral cooperation, regional cooperation in South Caucasus, which I believe is very important for uh, regional politics uh, at the juncture of Eurasia, Middle East, and Europe. Uh, so the cooperation in this uh, region has great uh, implications for the rest of the world. Uh, so um, the, uh, in my uh, short presentation, I would like to talk about regional and global uh, challenges. Uh, this is what I was expected to talk today. Uh, but previous speakers uh, focused more on the regional issues, so I will skip this part uh, and concentrate on uh, global uh, challenges. At the regional level, uh, I would like to just enumerate these challenges. Yes, territorial integrity is a very important challenge, and these uh, three countries uh, are keen on uh, defending this principle, core principle of international law. And uh, I think uh, these countries uh, will intensify their cooperation. Uh, the Syrian the recognition of uh, the independence declarations of uh, Afghanistan and South Ossetia, I think doesn't mean much. Why? Because uh, Assad authority is quite limited. Uh, probably they took this decision uh, with the advice uh, of the Russians uh, of course, Russia could have uh, garnered greater support for this, but the uh, Russian policy is to keep this recognition issue very limited. That's why few countries are interested in doing so. I don't think that uh, there will be more recognitions in future. Uh, this will not set trend. Um, the real challenge for these uh, regions, I think, stems from Russia's policy of integrating these regions to Russia in confederal form or something uh, in the future. We will wait and see how Russia's policy on these regions will develop. At present, uh, I don't think that uh, even Russia is interested in making these uh, territories independent. And uh, none of these countries, mm -hmm. Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Georgia, they will not recognize this uh, de facto situation. Um, so, territorial integrity of these countries are important. Nagorno Karabakh uh, and also 20% of Azerbaijani territories have been uh, illegally occupied by Armenian troops, and this is also another 
unacceptable violation of international law and the three countries are determined to protect Azerbaijan's territorial integrity. Uh, there are also some challenges to Turkey's territorial integrity from the south, and Turkey has been coping with this uh, threat from Syria uh, by using its own resources, and it has uh, carried out successful operations uh, in Syria, and uh, Turkey is also keen on protecting its own uh, border security, and uh, we believe that uh, our partners, Azerbaijan and Georgia, we uh, continue to uh, support Turkey's uh, position on these issues. So these countries have a lot in common. When we look at uh, broader issues, uh, I think uh, we should uh, talk about global challenges, because I think uh, regional issues have been discussed a lot, but uh, the world is changing. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have the conceptual tools to make sense of this current change. As our ambassador uh, said, uh, the 19th century analogy would be more suitable to make sense of the current changes than the Cold War scenario. But maybe we face a completely new uh, situation, and we need new conceptual tools and also frameworks to make sense of it. Why? Because uh, it is unprecedented. Now, <coughs> we see three major challenges at the global level. First one is the tension between Russia and the United States. And this confrontation uh, also takes the form of NATO and Russia confrontation. Of course, Turkey and the regional countries uh, in this trilateral partnership uh, prefer to keep this region very stable because uh, these countries are close to uh, this uh, battlefield, in a sense. And uh, being very close to Russia is a risky place. I mean, Latin American countries can speculate on this confrontation easily because they are far away from this uh, conflict zone. But Russia, as this Syrian example has shown, uh, and also Ukrainian case, is trying to link a number of different issues to its global agenda. So dealing with Russia is a, a complex issue. And uh, adding fuel to this fire is not a uh, logical and sustainable policy. So the regional countries, uh, I think, uh, should do their best to keep these uh, negative implications of this confrontation to minimum by using greater diplomacy. And uh, our chairperson uh, mentioned uh, these Turkish-Russian relations. I think Turkey has set a good example in dealing with uh, Russia's relations with the neighborhood. Turkey does not recognize Russia's annexation of Crimea. Turkey uh, is not also happy with uh, Russia's uh, role in Syria, but the reality is, on the ground, necessitates the Turkey to uh, have some cooperation with Russia. Why? Because Russia is a key actor in the region. No country can really turn a blind eye on these superpowers. The United States is a superpower, and all countries do cooperate with the United States. It is uh, quite normal. And also, when it comes to Russia, we cannot ignore Russia. I mean, for Russia, for Georgia, for example, uh, there was this experience of uh, 2008, and uh, the rest of the world was more or less uh, ineffective in helping Georgia with that. Uh, why? Because uh, 
uh, and also in the Ukrainian crisis. So uh, it is important to uh, accommodate, to, uh, to cope with Russia's policies in the neighborhood more diplomatically than by increasing tension and confrontation. So Turkey has this uh, policy of uh, saying the right things when needed, like uh, the rejection of the Crimean annexation, the rejection of the recognition of uh, the, uh, intense declaration of South Ossetia and Abkhazia, then Turkey says this. But on the other hand, when it comes to regional security, Turkey also asks Russia to cooperate with regional actors to make region more stable. Uh, uh, Nagorno-Karabakh is one of the areas where Russian cooperation is important. The uh, Syrian crisis, uh, yes, Astana process, has proved to be very successful. It has limited uh, the areas of conflict and also uh, contributed to the solution of uh, the refugee problem uh, to a certain extent, and all countries benefited from this. So uh, I think uh, this uh, Russia and the US confrontation is an important confrontation. It is more about the global politics, has very little to do with the region, but uh, regional countries may do their best to keep this region uh, out of this global confrontation because uh, probably regional countries uh, could suffer greatly if it is, if this confrontation is played out uh, exclusively in this region. Another important challenge, I think, is Europe's future, which we don't know, after Brexit. So the uh, European Union also studied scenarios, and last year they published uh, five scenarios for the future of Europe, and none of them really uh, make sense, and uh, because European countries are internally divided, and they are not sure about the future of Europe. And uh, the EU commissioner uh, identified the sixth scenario and uh, the discussions about Italian economy, economy, politics, uh, Spanish situation. All these problem, uh, problems make things increasingly difficult for European countries. Of course, the future of Europe is important for this region. Why? Because for a long time, these regional countries assumed that there is one Europe. Europe wants this and that, but today we should ask which Europe? Is it Europe represented by Germany, asking for deepening of this cooperation, or Europe uh, by, represented by UK asking for greater dynamism in wider Europe, and also France, which is meddling in between these two powers. So, but the three of these regional countries in the South Caucasus have close ties to these countries. So tensions in European among the European countries could be reflected in the region. That's why regional countries. Uh, should uh, cooperate closer with the European countries and also uh, participate in debates about the future of Europe. I think, personally, European Union should uh, close its eyes to the wider Europe and concentrate its own internal affairs, which is that not for this region, but also for the European countries. I'm in favor of widening of the Europe, European integration. Uh, and this region <coughs> could uh, keep European agenda alive, and Turkey, as well as regional countries, have a lot to cooperate in that. 
So European countries can think strategically about their future by engaging these countries uh, like Turkey, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Armenia closer to Europe. Otherwise, Europe, uh, which focused on its own internal integration, Germany and some of the northern countries, uh, I don't think that that Europe will have any strategic influence in the future. Another uh, important challenge uh, is China. Belt and Road Initiative and the regional countries should think about it. Because the projects that these uh, countries have realized are about this Belt and Road Initiative. Because of this uh, bucket list cars railway and other connectivity uh, projects are important. Why? Because it is important to integrate Asia with Europe. So South Caucasus is in the middle of that. So Turkey, uh, Azerbaijan and Georgia did a great job in creating this connectivity. Not only in the railways, in transportation, road transportation, and also Turkey has, uh, is going to open its uh, very uh, large uh, airport and uh, telecommunications industry is growing. So this South Caucasus and Turkey will be the key to this Asia-Europe connectivity. Uh, China is pursuing uh, its policies unilaterally. This is the risk. European countries are in favor of working with China, but China says that, okay, we have the money, and we will determine which projects will be realized and which ones will not be realized. So this is not really uh, preferable, not only for European countries, but also for Turkey, uh, Georgia, and Azerbaijan. So China should be more open to the participation of other countries. Uh, so there should be more participatory approach to regional cooperation in the framework of uh, Belt and Road Initiative. But uh, China should also uh, uh, keep in mind that uh, there are also other Asian players which are interested in reviving the Silk Road, like Japan and Korea. South Korea. So these countries, I think, should be engaged with this connectivity issue. So I think uh, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Georgia, these countries have great interest in realizing these projects, whether it is Belt and Road and, or other. Definitely, Europe and Asia should uh, be uh, brought together, and uh, these countries should uh, play the role of bridge but uh, it shouldn't serve the interest of China only. It should be beneficial to all countries and, uh, and also uh, to conclude my speech, I think we should, the regional countries, come up with strategic ideas. Yes, these projects, pipeline projects, transport, they were great. But now we are in the sec uh, next stage. We should really come up with more economic formulas. How to make use of transportation? We have the network, infrastructure. But it is important to have more people, goods, and services transported. For this, economies should be open to investment. So there should be more incentives to uh, investments in for the investors of these three countries. Georgian, Azerbaijan, and Turkish investors should have greater flexibility and opportunity to invest in three of these countries. And uh, we should create such a uh, rising center for economic dynamism in the region, uh, that would attract greater attention from other countries. So
So uh, uh, I think uh, this region has a great potential for future, but uh, for that uh, we should also produce ideas, strategic ideas. We shouldn't say that okay, we, we this is a good uh, trilateral grouping, and we are doing well. No, maybe we did well, but we should keep uh, producing new ideas. Uh, it's a competition. So uh, I think uh, it is important to have meetings like this, but maybe future meetings should have more focused ideas on different aspects of connectivity, different aspects of geopolitics, uh, trade, uh, tourism, or other issues of functional cooperation, uh, uh, because these countries obviously have great interest in cooperation, win-win scenarios, are very easy to be achieved. And thank you for your input. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting uh, conclusion that uh, actually we should not concentrate only on security and only on this uh, development of corridor, but also on internal cooperation, which is we have huge potential for cooperation in different fields. And Ms. Metra very mentioned also the several fields, uh, and we, we should find uh, uh, to cooperate in uh, science, technology, and um, a small and medium business, for example, uh, try to uh, organize together uh, and make internal development together. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, actually, I will, yeah, um, Zura was demanding uh, the to intervene to challenge one of the issues related to Russia and uh, thank, thank, thank you again for a well, very interesting presentation um, regarding the Russia and diplomacy with Russia. Uh, actually, we tried as a country, but it doesn't work, unfortunately. As, uh, Russia doesn't recognize territorial integrity of Georgia. It is impossible to have uh, normal diplomatic relations. Unfortunately, it is uh, it was chosen by uh, Moscow, not by Georgia. So it's unacceptable uh, to have uh, normal uh, relations now with Russia, unfortunately, again. By the way, it's, uh, other countries also have the same problem, similar problem, not only Georgia, but uh, Ukraine, Moldova, and even Baltic countries uh, as well. Uh, regarding Syria, I think that it's uh, uh, turns uh, um, very well known so-called frozen conflicts uh, and uh, nobody knows uh, what uh, will be the future of this frozen conflict and uh, as, uh, Russia is very uh, good specialist uh, turns these conflicts to very hot conflicts, uh, this, uh, frozen conflicts. Only this remark regarding the uh, diplomacy is Russian. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, we, we really worked hard in order to, to normalize relations with Russia, but uh, uh, something was achieved, but this is not enough uh, to secure our uh, development of our relations with this country and to solution of our problems which are caused by this country. But anyway, I support that uh, still continuation is necessary. Please. Uh, regarding the transportation project, what what will happen after the project? Okay, we finished the project. Which goods or services will we transport from there? Uh, on this framework, we are working with Kazakhstan. For example, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Ukraine are working together for the common customs. Yes, because it has common tariffs. And then Azerbaijan signed an agreement with Poland for the transportation of goods and services. Then uh, we have a cooperation in Caspian Sea between uh, Alat port, the Aktau, and Tukmenbashi port. For example, as I mentioned, we have uh, different other projects that, that's a part of other beginning of the Bakit of Cars Railway. For example, beginning from Afghanistan, from Kazakhstan, 
During the uh, inauguration of Pakuti Trisi Cars Railway, the Prime Minister of Kazakhstan and Prime Minister of Uzbekistan uh, in Azerbaijan, uh, in Azerbaijan uh, attended the cooperation, uh, the inauguration process of Pakuti Trisi. Why? Because we are planning uh, to cooperate with Central Asian countries uh, in this transportation area. To bring together Central Asian as you mentioned, to bring Central Asian countries with uh, European countries, Eastern European countries, Mediterranean Sea countries. That's why we have some views, some ideas, what will happen after the Pakuti Physical Railway. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me, uh, um, we, have, we have 10 minutes left uh, officially, or maybe five. Ten minutes. Later. We start a little bit later, right? Yeah, this is ten minutes later. This panel. So uh, let us do also uh, one question to you, as far as uh, we ask questions to uh, other colleagues. So, uh, you mentioned that China, uh, China's policy is a cause of uh, the cautiousness of other countries, of uh, European and us, also the regional countries, because China comes with its own uh, agenda. Uh, very strict, uh, not flexible, and uh, not engaging uh, in, 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 in um, uh, reality. China's uh, official declared policy is to engage everybody and to, to find uh, uh, compromises and common interest and mutual interest, etc. But what about the European approaches? The, uh, uh, is the European Union uh, trying to negotiate with China and to? A compromise with China in certain things in order to engage with, the, with uh, uh, China in this uh, uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, as far as uh, uh, EU, before, far before China has ambition to, to reach the region of Central Asia and, far and beyond, the China from the west to east. And now China is coming from east to west. So logically these two projects should meet and should uh, uh, compromise, right? But uh, what do you see, how European Union or, or how Turkey also looks to the future of this kind of cooperation? Uh, at this moment, I see that the European Union is very cautious itself also. Uh, and maybe the reason is what you said, but probably there is way out from this situation. Thank you very much. I think this is quite an important question. And the Belt and Road Initiative is a working program. We should always keep this in mind. Uh, so uh, there are different rules, <coughs> and we are talking about only one of these. A little further, but uh, uh, the sea route is even more interesting. And uh, China has a number of options, and it is playing this game very well. Uh, it has certain strengths. First, money. Uh, it has money, and uh, it controls the. Uh, uh, the, the uh, Asian Development Bank, Investment Bank. So it has greater power in investment decisions. Uh, so Russia, uh, uh, China could propose certain things, and uh, if other countries don't agree with this, and uh, China can easily say, okay, I have an alternative. So if you look at Chinese policy or Belt and Road Initiative, it simply plays all the actors against each other at this stage. Georgia is competing with Armenia, and Armenia is competing with Azerbaijan. Iran is another competitor, Turkey. And uh, they all see that uh, there is one route uh, from the north, south, east, west. And, uh, and the, I think they are all mistaken. Why? Because it's up to China to invest to make decisions on its investment plan. So these regional countries uh, shouldn't be that much uh, enthusiastic about that because uh, this will simply play into the hands of Chinese investors. And they will say, OK, we can play you against uh, each other and get what we want at a more preferable condition. From the European perspective, I think uh, most of the Europeans believe that this, this is a good initiative because uh, trade is good, globalization is good, and there's nothing to be worried about that. 
the European economies will benefit from this. This is the general outlook, but uh, because of the confrontation between United States and China in the South uh, China Sea issues and uh, other issues, uh, global issues, I think the European countries have become more uh, skeptical about that. Uh, first, uh, because of this uh, U.S.-Chinese relations. Secondly, because of the decline in bargaining power of European countries. European countries have deep economic problems. They are not in a position of influencing Chinese decisions. So uh, their influence has declined. This is the main reason, I think. Uh, the inclusion of other actors, Japan and South Korea, could make a difference because they also have some extra money to invest, unlike European countries. Uh, so maybe uh, the increase in the investment of certain regional actors in this region, in Central Asia and the Caucasus, uh, Japan, Korea, Turkey, um, Brazil, uh, such uh, actors, if they invested more in this region, then China uh, could have a stronger uh, side in this bargaining. Uh, to conclude, I think um, uh, it is very important uh, to create infrastructure to increase connectivity between Asia and uh, Europe but not to emphasize China. Which will be difficult, I think, but uh, thank you very much. Very interesting uh, explanation of, uh, of your supporting your arguments. Well, uh, thank you very much. Let us to, to give uh, opportunity or possibility to the audience. Uh, so many questions already. Yes, please. And name yourself first. And I'm sorry. I think for the it will be a microphone. I think so. Hello everyone, uh, Nana Pitsalani, representative of the Ministry of Economy and Sustainable Development. So my question goes to our uh, distinguished speaker, Dr. Galiev, and to Dr. Mamadov. Uh, as you have mentioned before in your impressive speech, Iran came back to the geopolitical arena. So after the sanction, uh, it's on the agenda, came back the diversification of energy, uh, supply sources and transportation roads and uh, it's all about the geopolitics deal and all about the energy and national security. Uh, so after the sanction um, uh, there's the debates on transportation, Iranian gas uh, via the uh, swap operation to Georgia uh, and with the participation of Armenia. This means for Armenia the, uh, to gain somehow the transit road and for Georgia to the further diversification of energy supply roads. And still to consider that Gazprom is owning uh, the gas system, uh, transportation system in Armenia. Uh, and uh, plus uh, Iran is uh, in communication with Turkmenistan instead of some debates to transport additional gas volume to the western direction. So my question goes to the position of Azerbaijan and if there is any strategic uh, discussions in things that level, uh, what will be the position of Azerbi Azerbaijan uh, in, uh, uh, in regard with this new geopol geopolitical situation in the region? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, William Heinderov, uh, Office uh, of the National Security Council. Uh, our distinguished uh, speakers uh, provided us with uh, no, the analysis of not only challenges but opportunities for trilateral cooperation. Uh, I dare to ask each of the speakers what kind of internal developments may negatively affect trilateral or even bilateral cooperation within the triangle ankara tbilisi baku Thank you. Uh, good day. Thank you. I'm Tatia Taufelze from Tbilisi State University. 
Um, I have several questions, but I will try to form it shortly. <clears throat> it was mentioned several times that these countries, Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Georgia, have a common future. Uh, could you please specify what you mean in common future? When we are talking regarding the European Union, we should take into consideration that these three countries stand at different <coughs> place in the integration process of the European Union. For example, e Georgia has a clear statement already that we want to become the part of the EU, and Azerbaijan and Turkey, they have somehow different views towards the Union. So how could you imagine this common future in terms of the European Union? And also, don't you think that when we are talking that the European Union should uh, involve those countries in the <coughs> process of cooperation, what the Turkey and Azerbaijan has to suggest when we know that currently in Turkey especially there is a severe problems of democracy, human rights. So how would suggest to cooperate in the European Union has this uh, request of oh, high standard of democracy? I mean, what is your suggestion to the Union or you just think that just close eyes on these problems and cooperate as much as it's used to those countries? Thank you. Questions to you. Thank you very much. First of all, Iran, Armenia, Georgian Energy Corridor. Of course, firstly, it's their own duty. It's the duty of Iran, Armenia, and Georgia, uh, which corridor they will use. As, as, as Azerbaijan cannot interfere uh, to these relations, but uh, objectively, it's my own view, and in Azerbaijan, we don't think that there is a good opportunity uh, for Armenia to be a corridor, to be a transport corridor between Iran and uh, Georgia. The first reason you explain, because of the investment or gas plant, really. And secondly, they, they need some other infrastructure to uh, take Iranian natural resources over the Georgia to the world market. They don't have enough money. Even they don't have enough money for the railway corridor, to, to construct railway corridor between Iran and Armenia. So objectively, we don't think that Armenia have enough uh, money or construct uh, uh, other opportunities, resources, resources for this. Uh, Iran pays money. Iran don't, we, we don't think Iran has enough money, for, first of all, for the, uh, using their resources, they, they need a, a, a big money. The, this money can... Excuse me, uh, I just remind that we uh, gave uh, money, money, money yeah. million dollars. Yes. 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 So they have your money now. Yes. Yeah. 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 We, we give. But the cost of this railway is more than six But they have Russian there. Yes. They, they have don't Russia. have enough money to invest in these pipelines, even their energy resources. They have Russia there. Right? Sorry? Excuse me, but the owner of the pipelines and the owner of the railways of Armenia is the Russian yes. 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 So you have to talk with them uh, to, 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 to solve this problem. Okay, very interesting. I should stop there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was During very the interesting. Interesting. I think one. Uh, have we finished our work with this resource? Yes, I, I, sorry. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't think that uh, in Azerbaijan and in Turkey uh, any change in authorities will have negative impact tri on trilateral relations. Why I am talking on Turkey as a budget? Because I am from as a budget and uh, expert on Turkey. That's why uh, the why these three countries are in the, in the, the, their relation interdependent because Georgia needs energy resources, Azerbaijan needs gas Georgia. Uh, Azerbaijan the Georgia only uh, way to the world market for Azerbaijan and Turkey need energy, it comes from Caspian Sea or the Georgia. So these three countries, uh, independent from the authorities, are in the are interdependent in relation. So I don't think that any change in the domestic uh, issues will have negative impact on the Thank you. Thank you. Very briefly, uh, I think first question was 
Regarding uh, our uh, uh, Georgian colleague's question about the EU membership prospects, um, unfortunately, uh, none of these countries in the region, including Armenia, have any real prospect of joining the EU as a full member in the foreseeable future. That's valid for Georgia at all. Uh, so, yes, there are some partnerships and the level of integration uh, between Georgia and EU is far uh, less limited than Turkey's integration with EU. Uh, Turkey and EU has uh, harmonized its legislation in many fields. Uh, despite the progress that Turkey has achieved in Europeanizing its uh, socio-economic system, uh, because of this uncertainty about the future of EU, since there are different scenarios, I think there is no appetite in EU to have new members, especially from the South Caucasus. And the also Turkish membership seems unlikely at present. Uh, we, it, uh, it remains to be seen. Of course, uh, Turkish European cooperation will continue. It's a strategic objective for Turkey, and that's good for the regional countries, including Armenia. Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia will benefit if Turkish European relations are strengthened. Uh, but uh, without uh, uh, this uh, relationship, I think the uh, European uh, perspectives of the South Caucasian countries will remain also quite limited. So these countries should work more. Uh, to intensify this uh, cooperation with EU uh, as a region first. But if these countries uh, try to use the European card, I mean certain progresses in small areas against others, no, it is, it is not meaningful. Why? Because uh, on the Europeanization thing, all countries, including Armenia, have the common interest. But European countries don't have appetite. So we should convince all countries, convince the European Union that, OK, you have responsibility in wider Europe, and you should engage more with this region. And in the distant future, maybe EU should uh, broaden itself and include these countries as full members. Without being a full member of the EU, is special partnerships in visa liberal liberalization, this or that, doesn't mean much. Important thing is to be the full member, to have the equal voting rights. Otherwise, uh, the EU member states 
uh, will take decisions on behalf of you and you will be expected to implement them. Your capacity to implement these decisions will be highly limited due to your economic problems, socio-cultural challenges, and all regional countries will find it difficult. That's why Turkey insists on not being part of this uh, Eastern Partnership thing. It insists on uh, the full membership perspective. So the regional country, Georgia, shouldn't be too much uh, excited by this current uh, this agreement, which is quite important. I'm very supportive of the EU vocation of the Georgia, but it is too little. It is not much. Uh, yeah, you should, uh, we should, as a region, think uh, uh, more and uh, create conditions for full membership. This is the challenge. But it is not easy. Thank you very much. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, I'm not allowed to enter the debate, so you see, as far as I moderate it. Just, <laughs> but I think that there are also regional options. Uh, Georgia has other regional options also, uh, safe South Caucasian option. So, with the Black Sea region, for example, with Ukraine, Moldova, and making stronger partnership with the EU. So we have uh, a kind of way, um, even uh, it is very important, of course, cooperation inside of South Caucasian region, but this is, uh, I don't want to enter the debate, just saying that uh, respect very much your, your views on that. And it is encouraging to Georgia, your view is encouraging, we should work more and uh, in order to achieve our goal. But let us to say, to ask the Georgian uh, colleague to say to his uh, short, uh, to show Very his short. position. Uh, regarding uh, internal developments, uh, uh, governments change, rather change, but uh, attitude does not change in our countries regarding each other. Uh, and it's a very natural, very uh, uh, natural uh, things like that. Because, uh, for example, if you, uh, you say that you are Georgian or you are Azerbaijani uh, in, in Turkey, it doesn't mean that you are foreigner because uh, of these cultural uh, uh, values uh, that are common and uh, maybe. Uh, citizens uh, with Georgian origins that live in uh, uh, Turkey. They are even member of uh, parliament, they are member of uh, cabinet, so uh, this is when we are uh, talking that uh, attitudes does not change. Uh, uh, regarding uh, common future, uh, we are talking about European Union, but at the same time we have to uh, mention also NATO, because Turkey is a NATO member country, and uh, I hope one day we will, uh, as Georgia's uh, country, and maybe uh, Azerbaijan in the future, will participate. So this is our common future. This is European Union, and at the same time it's NATO. And other projects also, with railway, with uh, oil pipeline, and other projects, uh, this is our common future. Well, you have asked particularly on uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey. I would, of course, include in that uh, all countries in the EU. The standards do not cease to be applied once you are in the club. Applying the standards to yourself is very important. Now, let me tell you, um, there are um, one of the basics of democracy uh, which we as the NATO members, as for Georgia, is democratic control of the armed forces, which means the military has to be out of politics. Now, the, the, some of the members of the Turkish military who, was involved, who were involved in the 15th of July attempt were given refugee status in the EU member state. There are Islamophobic tendencies growing, right-wing extremism growing, populism growing in the EU. There are always problems. There's no ideals, no ideal utopic society, neither in the EU nor in this region that developed. It was in the past and so on. 
We all have deficits. That's why there's a Council of Europe, for instance, ECHR. And we are all responsible. And, and trust me, with the threats increasing, uh, like in our region, when you're faced with occupation, when you're faced with wars, when you're faced with terrorism, then the liberties are very hard to keep and rewind. Now, Azerbaijan and Turkey are two countries. Georgia is another country which is dealing with these issues. So um, I'm afraid um, to your question about the EU, the EU should decide this, applying the standards to its own members as well, to keep the standards. I think that's a very good one. Uh, now, uh, going back to my question, uh, is actually about, you mentioned investments, which is something I've been telling in these five months, that this is the way. And when I look at the cross investments, uh, there are a couple of Turkish banks who are operating in three countries. There are some Azeri investments, and the Georgian investment is also starting to develop. And of course, maybe we could do a scheme where a regional uh, study of how these investments work, what sort of employment we receive, and uh, how we uh, move capital, and, and how does it work. Uh, I'd like to ask actually a question to you, Zurab, uh, my colleague. <laughs> uh, it's like, what do you think about these investments? Do you think these regional investment schemes would work or not? Yes, yes, and there was another also uh, question. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, welcome, Charaya. Uh, so, my, uh, I have one comment and one question also. Uh, so, when you are speaking about the cooperation in, uh, in our region, of course, I agree with you that. Uh, all our three countries should be uh, united as one uh, because we have same challenges in many terms. But um, when you are saying that uh, Turkey, let's say, has more cooperation right now than Georgia in the EU, or when you say that uh, it is too little that Georgia has already obtained in uh, relation to uh, European Union, I don't agree with you because uh, I think even Georgia is much farther with you than Turkey is. And uh, uh, also, uh, when you are speaking like the membership should be ultimate goal, I don't agree with you because it's not ultimate goal. It should be an instrument. It should be an uh, instrument to use uh, the European values, which are uh, in some cases very perfect, in some cases not so much. We should use those perfect cases uh, to develop our own countries and not just to enter European Union uh, like for nothing. Uh, if we will be inside European Union, maybe it will cause a lot of problems right now for Georgia, more than we have right now. And I, therefore, I believe that we should use uh, this um, European cooperation as an instrument to promote Georgian, uh, Georgia within inside. inside. So that uh, is my comment. In general, I agree with you, but also I have some um, uh, arguments in opposite to your uh, statements. And also about the question, when we are saying that we should uh, have a common future, uh, that could work in terms of uh, Chinese uh, investments, Chinese uh, to use our corridor as an uh, opportunity for <coughs> European Union and Chinese um, uh, goods for trade, I mean. So uh, how do you believe, is it uh, really possible to uh, make uh, our countries, Azerbaijan, uh, Georgia, and Turkey, uh, one of the main corridors uh, of trade between European Union and China. Thank you. Uh, to whom the question was? This, this question. Anyone? Azerbaijan and uh, Armenia, I mainly. Oh, okay. me. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, I, I, I want to remind that we should uh, resume the, uh, the session. So, so we should, please be sure. The uh, Azerbaijan, Turkey, Georgia, it's not main road for China goods and services to transport to European countries because uh, the uh, trade between East and West goes over the uh, oceans. It's 95% uh, of the trade between Asia and uh, Western countries. Also, we are 
struggling over there, five percent of the good and services. That's my question. A very brief about this common future. A common future is a vision. A, if the decision makers and the stakeholders dream about future, that could be realized. So it needs some active, thinking, active uh, participation in this uh, process. Taking all these common challenges, risks, facing all countries, some of which are immune from these challenges, it is normal to expect regional countries to cooperate more. So I think this is the impetus for uh, greater cooperation in future, uh, and that uh, uh, kind of regional microcosm of cooperation will set a good uh, model for other regional players in the Black Sea, in Central Asia, and other parts of uh, the world. Why? Because countries can solve their problems by themselves. Taking examples from other regions could be useful, but some of these models may not work because uh, your regional characteristics differ from other regional characteristics. So these three countries have already achieved a lot, uh, and there is no reason why they shouldn't do more in future. So I'm in favor of working together and cooperating more and uh, setting good uh, examples for others, rather than taking examples from uh, different regions, uh, which may or may not work in the specifics of this region, even if these models are excellent models. What we need is not perfect model, but practical model that could help to solve common problems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, regarding investments, uh, of course I'm not expert on economic, but uh, uh, I'd uh, like to answer this question. Uh, you know, investments are very important uh, for our countries and uh, for, uh, for example during uh, I think that uh, during last uh, decade or so uh, Azerbaijan is number one uh, investment um, in Georgia it's very important but uh, I think that uh, main thing is uh, attitude main thing is policy what is uh, policy regarding uh, uh, Georgia from Azerbaijan this is uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, continuation of uh, Azerbaijan's policy towards Georgia. And it's the same for Tur uh, Turkey, I think. I think that, and I hope that uh, in the future, Georgia also will invest uh, uh, in those countries. Uh, and regarding uh, uh, European Union and uh, integration with it, uh, Georgia or Turkey, uh, Turkey is a candidate uh, you know, for membership, so uh, it has all in some uh, fields, uh, maybe, for example, in a visa free regime we have, but Turkey doesn't have. But in some fields, Turkey is uh, in better position, for example, in industry and uh, in agriculture with harmonization uh, with the European Union, and uh, these fields are very important. Uh, and we have to say that Turkey is uh, in better position than Georgia. That's all.